Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your testimony today. Uh, here's how I view it. Um, the surge in Iraq ordered by President George W. Bush worked. Um, President Obama rejected the advice of many of his top military leaders to leave a residual force. Our administration did not make every effort that it possibly could to gain a status of forces agreement in Iraq. And, uh, and so we completely withdrew. And now ISIS is there controlling uh, large parts of the territory and wreaking the havoc that the President's responding to. Um, I am willing to help the President and to help you gentlemen take this hill again if I believe there's a, a plan that will work and be successful if training 5,000 troops in, at the, by the end of one year is going to help us be successful against something that's already uh, uh, metastasized and, and at, at 31,000, which is the size of ISIS now, uh, I want to I help if we can be convinced it will work and also if, if we can have some assurance that we will not throw away our gains this time as we did um, after the surge worked. Uh, General Dempsey, in answer to the question by the chairman of this committee, do you support the President's strategy, you say that, that you do. Now, the Washington Post reports that Mr. Obama has rejected the re recommendation of his top military commanders that U.S. Special Operations Forces be deployed to assist Iraqi Army units in fighting the rebels. Um, is that report by Rajiv uh, Chandra Sakharan correct in the Washington Post? And where did you come down on that recommendation? No, that report is not correct. And where I came down on a recommendation uh, in terms of having advisors accompany, this is the issue we're describing, whether advisors who are already there and generally uh, resident in headquarters, whether they would accompany the Iraqi security forces into combat. I have not come uh, to an occasion where I believe that's necessary. They're doing fine. We're able to uh, provide them air power using full motion video and systems. Who is, who is doing fine? The Iraqi security forces in the Peshmerga are moving back on the offensive. But as I said, Senator, if I get to the point where for a particular mission I think they should accompany, I'll make that recommendation. Yeah, and I did, I did hear you say that, and I at least appreciate that. L let, me, um, let me submit for the record uh, a column in today's post, Mr. Chairman, uh, by uh, Mark Thiessen, in, uh, wherein uh, he talks about uh, General Lloyd Austin, a top commander of U.S. forces in the Middle East. And to quote Mr. Thiessen, in 2010, General Austin advised President Obama against withdrawing all of U.S. forces from Iraq, recommending that the President instead leave 24,000 U.S. troops to secure the military gains made in the surge <coughs> and to prevent a terrorist resurgence. Had Obama listened to Austin's counsel, the rise of the Islamic State could have been stopped. Where did you come down on that debate, General Dempsey, at that point? Well, actually, Senator, as you know, we, we don't d debate anything in the military. We provide options discussion. And, and let our elected officials make their decisions. I, it's well known that uh, all military leaders believed we needed to leave some residual force in Iraq to continue the development of the security forces. Um, I, you know, there's a, there is a debate in which I am not a participant about whether we tried as hard as we could to leave it there, and that's, that's a debate. Uh, that will continue, I, I believe. But I, I thought we should have left forces there. I traveled to Iraq, and I, I was the chief staff of the army at the time. Discussed it with the prime minister. Uh, look, I don't know what, how history will exactly describe this. Let me describe Nuri Al Maliki as a very difficult partner most of the time, and in particular on that issue. Well, on, on the issue of trying hard enough, I think anybody that's really observed the situation would acknowledge that. Um, a government, a United States government that can go into Iraq today and persuade the, pre the Prime Minister to step down could certainly have uh, mustered the skills 
to get them to sign a status of forces agreement. So it's obvious to me that we didn't try very hard. And, and, and let me just reiterate to you, I want us to win. I want us to defeat ISIS. Uh, but I want a plan that can, that can be successful, and I'm not sure 5,000 trained in a year can be successful against 31,000. And I want to make sure that we don't make the same mistake again by throwing those gains away. One quick question to you, uh, Secretary H Hagel. Uh, in reading your testimony about what the coalition partners are going to do, I have no idea specifically what we're asking of them or what, they're, they're, uh, what we can expect. They've expressed their willingness. They've ind indicated their readiness. They want to help to do their share, begin making commitments, take measures to uh, suppress the flow. Uh, I have no idea, based on your testimony, what our coalition partners are expected to do or even what we want them to do. Uh, Senator, my intent was, was not to give you that inventory this morning and go through that. First of all, are you uh, able to? Uh, we can do that privately in closed session with a number of countries. That's what we're doing right now. We're in the process of doing that right now. As I mentioned, over the last two weeks, we've been building the coalition. Uh, we've been organizing the coalition. General Allen's main job, as I noted in my testimony, is doing that right now. He's meeting with the President this morning. Uh, we have all finalized that effort. Uh, we have a list of over 40 nations who we have talked to. Uh, most have come to us who have uh, volunteered uh, specific areas of expertise, what they would do. Uh, we'll make specific requests, but that's ongoing right now. That's will, part will, of the plan uh, the will President Will Saudi request. pilots and Saudi jets be involved in airstrikes? Like I said, it's part of the plan, and, and uh, I don't want to get into the specifics of that in an open hearing. But as I said in my testimony, uh, as Secretary Kerry has said uh, as recently as yesterday, uh, we have Middle Eastern allies uh, who have said that uh, they will be involved in, in uh, uh, military operations with us. And for right now, uh, at an open hearing, let me leave it. Uh, Thank you. That way, but let me assure you that that is going on right now, and it's a key part of what we what we need to do. And if I could assure the, se the senator that when Lloyd Austin and I convene a chief of defense conference soon uh, after the president approves the campaign plan, there's a couple of things we have to accomplish. One is we need to make the campaign plan the Iraqi campaign plan, not CENTCOM's campaign plan. Secondly. The contributions of, in particular, the Arab nations need to be real. It can't, in our, and this is military now. I'm not looking for political support. I'm looking for special forces advisors. I'm looking for trainers. I'm looking for tankers. I'm looking for ISR, and I'm looking for strike aircraft. Thank you very much. Thank you.